in this video we're going to think um, about the way that the cranial nerves are controlled and specifically we're going to think about the way that the motor functions of the cranial nerves are controlled. Now for your reference on the right hand side I've provided you with you know a view of the brain stem that you are probably fairly familiar with. This is a photograph um, of a plastic model um, and you can see for example optic nerves, oculomotor nerves, trigeminal nerves. Okay, You're already, you're already familiar with all of this from head and neck. Um, I want to now put this in terms of upper and lower motor neurons um, because you know that the trigeminal nerve for example is a motor nerve as well as a sensory nerve and it's a motor nerve because it contains the axons of lower motor neurons. And these lower motor neurons are found in the pons in a discrete area of grey matter called the trigeminal motor nucleus. Okay, So the trigeminal motor nucleus is in the pons and it has got cell bodies of motor neurons, lower motor neurons, which send their axons out through the trigeminal nerve to muscles of mastication. Okay? So this is the way that it works. The motor cranial nerves have a corresponding motor nucleus which sends lower motor neuron axons out through the cranial nerve to the target tissue. Now, there are, to control these lower motor neurons, corresponding upper motor neurons descending from the brain, okay? So these upper motor neurons come down from the cerebral cortex, from the motor cortex, they might cross the line, and they synapse up on um, our cranial nerve motor nuclei to control them, all right? So the cranial nerves are no different from spinal nerves, really, in that they contain lower motor neurons, which are themselves controlled by upper motor neurons. So what we're going to do in the rest of this video is just look at the way that a selection of these motor cranial nerves are controlled um, and the pattern of the projections coming down from the brain. So in order to do that, um, we're going to draw our usual representation, but we're going to focus in on the cerebral hemispheres and the brain stem. All right, so here is one hemisphere, there's another. Here's the midbrain, the pons, the medulla and the top of the spinal cord. like this okay and um, because we're going to think about pathways crossing over we're going to draw on the midline like this and I'm going to focus on uh, just three cranial nerves and the three nerves we're going to think about are the trigeminal the facial and the vagus okay so um, in keeping with our colour scheme that we've developed um, on the right hand side, I'm going to draw on the trigeminal motor nuclei which are found in the pons. Okay, so here is the trigeminal nucleus, there and there, found in the pons. And as you know, although I'm not going to put it on, those trigeminal motor nuclei contain lower motor neurons who send their axons out through the trigeminal nerves to the muscles of mastication. The other uh, nucleus that we're going to put on is the facial motor nucleus here and here and finally we're going to draw on um, in green the nucleus ambiguous which is the nucleus in the medulla which contains motor neurons which are distributed through the vagus nerves all right so just for your benefit um, as we said green is nucleus ambiguous, uh, red is the um, facial nucleus, the facial motor nucleus, and blue is the trigeminal nucleus, the trigeminal motor nucleus. Okay, so let's consider each of these in turn. Um, and there's something interesting about almost all of these nuclei and that is that they typically have a bilateral innervation, all right? Uh, and we'll consider why that is a little bit later on. But a pattern that we frequently see in the innervation of the cranial nerve motor nuclei is that they receive a bilateral innervation from the cerebral cortex. So here, 
um, is an upper motor neuron. Um, and this is going to be an upper motor neuron which is going to connect to the trigeminal motor nucleus. Okay, so there it is. It connects to the trigeminal motor nucleus on the same side. And also, there are connections which cross the midline going to the contralateral trigeminal motor nucleus. We also have projections coming from the other cerebral hemisphere as well. So here are upper motor neurons in the other cerebral hemisphere which project both ipsilaterally and contralaterally. So you can see that the trigeminal motor nuclei receive a very rich um, innovation from their upper motor neurons. And what that means is that if there was, say, a stroke in this hemisphere destroying these upper motor neurons, still both nuclei would be supplied by upper motor neurons because we've got a bilateral innovation. Uh, and this kind of redundancy we frequently see in the innovation of particularly important structures. In this case, the innovation of the, the muscles of mastication. Because if you can't feed, you're not going to be able to survive. Now let's look at the facial nucleus. Now the facial nucleus is slightly different because the facial nucleus is actually split up into two halves. Okay, The facial nucleus is, is split into two halves. The upper half of the facial nucleus, the facial motor nucleus, supplies the upper half of the face, whereas the lower half of the facial motor nucleus supplies the lower half of the face. And these two halves of the facial motor nucleus receive a different pattern of innovation. The upper halves of the facial motor nucleus actually receive a bilateral innovation. Okay, So the upper halves of the facial motor nucleus receive a bilateral innovation. And what this means is that if you have a stroke on one side, the upper half of your face tends to be spared. So patients who've had strokes affecting their face, the forehead, you still see forehead creases and they're still able to raise their eyebrows on the side that's been affected by the stroke. However, the lower half of the facial motor nucleus, here and here, only receives a contralateral innovation. It only receives a contralateral innovation. And what that means is that stroke patients have a much worse um, set of signs affecting the lower half of their face than they do affecting the upper half of the face because there isn't that bilateral innovation of the lower half of the facial motor nucleus. Um, and this is a, an important distinction and you should read up more on this and because clinically you, you will see this when you go on the wards. Finally, let's consider this nucleus ambiguous um, which contains lower motor neurons which are going to distribute through the vagus nerves primarily to the vocal cords and the pharynx. And once again, the nucleus ambiguous has a bilateral innovation. Okay? It has a bilateral innovation. And this makes sense for reasons that we've already discussed with regard to the trigeminal nerve, because nucleus ambiguous controls swallowing and protection of the airway. And so if you didn't have an element of redundancy in this system, um, then you may have greater difficulties if you had a stroke affecting your swallowing. So that's all I'm going to talk about with regard to these corticonuclear projections. Um, and these are actually fairly clinically important. Okay, thank you.